your experience, what is the, you know, uh, what are the critical factors to minimize uh, these issues? And as um, Sheetal said that some of these are bound to be there. I mean, some women are, you know, going to have certain issues, but uh, if we had to look at how do we reduce the incidence of these issues, what are the yeah. key factors? Yeah. Aparna, again, I think we obstetricians need to reflect on this a lot. Mm. Uh, you know, um, earlier uh, when we did, uh, let's just take a cesarean, for example. Mm. Mm. You know, we, we do a cesarean, we show the baby to the mother, the baby goes away to the, you know, somewhere to the nursery because the mother is still being sutured up. Then mm. she goes into uh, a post-operative ward where she's in, a, in an air conditioned environment for various reasons. So you can't bring the baby in because the baby may get hypothermia. And we had all kinds of reasons for separating mother and baby. Mm. And when I think of, you know, oh God, how horrible we were. We, you know, we just presumed this is the way it should be done because the mother has to recover and she wouldn't actually see her baby for a few hours. And that's when the first time she would breastfeed. Mm. So we were doing the wrong thing. Mm. What we do today is even in the operation theater, the baby is born, the mother is given skin to skin and is encouraged to attempt breastfeeding. Right. So it just means uh, us to understand that and make the effort to provide that support. When you birth a baby normally, you know, vaginal birth, or even if you've applied an instrument, the baby is in good shape, put the baby straight away on the mother's chest. Mm. Encourage skin to skin. Get the baby to breastfeed within that one hour. I'm sure, Sheetal, you agree. It's that one hour that is so important. Then you've minimized these problems. The mother is so confident. Mm. Uh, this is what I'm talking about that happens during birth. Right. Antenatally, I agree with Sheetal. Mm. Those classes would help a lot. Right. And we've also got lactation counselors all over the hospital. Mm. At, a helpline 24 right. 7 because then mothers need to be able to talk to somebody. Right. Um, I definitely know that we obstetricians are most times probably hopeless in terms of supporting women, unless it's an obstetrician herself who's been a mother, faced these issues, thinks uh, differently, and is able to help. Right. But over the years, it looks like the lactation counselors have really been playing a huge role in helping mothers. Yeah.